Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to PowerTips. Welcome to the first power tip. In this power tip, we will discuss picking the right operating frequency for your power supply. As shown in this chart, the operating frequency impacts the size of the power supply. What we have here is a typical buck regulator. Uh, we're showing input filter capacitor, power switches, control and drive circuits, and then the output filter made of the output inductor and the output filter capacitor. And as we vary the operating the frequency of the power supply, several of the volumes also vary. For instance, the volume of the inductor significantly decreases as we raise the operating frequency. To a first order, the volume of the inductor is inversely proportional to the power supply switching frequency. The next component on this chart is the output filter capacitor, and its volume is also related to the switching frequency of the power supply. At low frequencies, our choice of, for the output filter capacitor will be aluminum, and the size won't vary very much. But once we go up into the three to 500 kilohertz switching frequency, we will be able to use ceramic capacitors, and we will be able to reduce their volume as a function of the switching frequency. The next item on the chart is the input filter capacitor, and the volume of the input filter capacitor is set by the ripple current rating. And the ripple current is pretty much independent of frequency in this power supply, and hence the volume of the input capacitor does not change very much. Again, that, that's true on the control and FET portions of, of the volume. Their size does not significantly vary with the operating frequency of the power supply. So in a typical 100 kilohertz switcher that we have over here on the left, we'll see that the volume is dominated by the output filter inductor. And as we are able to move to higher and higher operating frequencies, we'll see its volume diminish, we'll see the volume of the output filter capacitor diminish, but we'll see constant values of input filter capacitors and the control circuitry. So once we get past uh, one or two megahertz operating frequency, the power supply volume is going to be dominated by the control circuitry and the input filter capacitor. In this next chart, we show the impact on the losses in, in the control circuitry and FETs as a, a function of the die area. And basically what we ha have is as we make the die area larger and larger, we're reducing the on resistance of the MOSFET and we're also increasing parasitic capacitances in the output of the power devices. And the larger we make these parasitic capacitors, the larger the switching losses. So what I have drawn on this curve is this red curve represents the conduction losses within the power supply. For instance, if we double the size of the die, we've reduced the resistance by half and then cut the conduction loss in half. So as we make the die larger and larger, we continue to reduce the conduction loss. Now what I've drawn here are two curves representing switching loss. And so as we make this die area larger and larger, we're increasing the switching losses. And you can see that it continues up in proportional to the die area. This is at a low frequency, and this blue curve represents the switching losses at a higher frequency. Basically, every time we switch, we incur a little bit of energy that we've lost, and the more often we switch, uh, the more loss we're going to have in the circuit. And it's kind of interesting when you add the switching and conduction losses together. Uh, you'll see that, that you'll actually have a, a curve that reduces, and then as die area gets larger and larger, it actually starts to come up. And so this is counterinductive to the most people. They think that if you increase the die area arbitrarily, you can drive the, the losses in the MOSFET down and down. Uh, and that's not the case. You actually find that there's a minimum. And the interesting thing is that minimum occurs when the switching losses are equal to the conduction losses. Here's our switching losses at, at a low frequency. Here's our conduction losses that are independent of frequency. You add the two of them together and come up to this curve, and you see that you're at a minimum. Now the next interesting thing on this curve is when you add 
the switching losses at a higher frequency to the conduction losses, you'll see that you have a higher minimum loss. And so that, that's telling you, as you increase the switching frequency or power supply, you're going to lose efficiency. And so that's another th thing that you have to trade off when you're picking the operating frequency of the power supply, is that you, as you push the operating frequency higher and higher, uh, you're reducing your achievable power supply efficiency. Now typically, most people don't operate at these minimums. Typically, they'll operate somewhat to the left of the minimum, because there's another trade-off that needs to be made between the efficiency of the power supply and the cost of the power supply. So generally, people can't afford this much silicon to operate at the minimum points. So now you're down to picking the right frequency for your power supply. And it ends up as a trade-off among three different factors. If you're driving for the minimum size in your power supply, you obviously want to go as high in operating frequency as you can. That allows you to drive down the size of your output capacitors and output inductors. But if you are trying to go for an efficient power supply, you need to look at the low frequency because it reduces the switching losses and lets you operate at a lower optimum loss in your circuit. Now the other thing that, that's not quite so clear in this is there's a, a trade-off in cost also. Um, as you push up into the higher operating frequencies, uh, you'll use less semiconductors because you'll end up with at a different optimum point on your choice on, on the MOSFETs. You'll end up with smaller output filter capacitors, have to buy less of them, and the output inductor cost is related to its volume also. So at the higher frequencies, you'll have a cheaper inductor. So basically, you've got a choice of where you want to do your optimization. Either you go for high frequency, where you're going to have small size and low cost, or you go for low frequency, large size, but good efficiency. For more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line and search on power tips. We have about 45 of them in there so far, and, and we can continue to add to them on a monthly basis. Or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks for your attention.